One of the things that Bungie does significantly better than 343, and this isn't a dog on Numbered Studio or whatever, but Bungie really understood character development, and not only did that show in their protagonists, but it also showed in their antagonists. And my absolute favorite amongst these is the Flood, something that went from some random shaping sickness or space plague that has encompassed almost every single aspect of modern horror and taken it to its logical next extreme. And this is where a lot of problems in the community actually arise. A lot of people say that the Flood were better when it was some unknown space plague, but, but I disagree. In my eyes, to have a compelling cosmic horror, you actually need to have some level of understanding as to how or why it's actually terrifying. The late 90s and early 2000s media scene can best be described by an overwhelming amount of zombie and other cryptids popular in mythology, such as vampires and werewolves. With Halo Combat Evolved, the mainstream gaming audience was given a new take on an overdone idea. It wasn't anything particularly new, but it had done almost everything within the zombie media and combined it all together. The concept of a sentient disease combined with a space plague, fungal horror, as well as the zombie aspect or flesh reanimation was just enough to get the mainstream audience absolutely terrified. Some rock in the middle of space having a disease capable of somehow converting all life regardless of cellular structure or internal systems was absolutely horrifying. Not to downplay the severity of the Flood in Halo CE, but the Flood up until Halo 2 were just super space zombies. And after the success of Halo CE and the increase in popularity to the Halo novels, we got another step closer to the true cosmic horror with the concept of a grave mind. For a lot of people, myself included, Halo 2 was the perfect introduction to the genre of cosmic horror. This idea that the super disease has existed for all time and was the ultimate parasite, up until that point, the Flood was an enemy that could be beat. The rings were a terrible option, but it did seem to work, and it looked like the only option. I know for a lot of the Halo audience, it really did sink in when High Charity fell in the matter of hours, but for the more casual audience, I don't believe it actually sunk in. The capital city of a galactic superpower, one of the most heavily guarded ships in the entire galaxy, fell in hours. Keep in mind, this was the single largest Covenant fleet that anyone up to this point had ever seen, and it fell within hours. I really don't think that sunk in for a lot of people until Halo 3, though. The title of this part of the video isn't meant to rage bait, it's just a fact for a lot of people. The human brain wasn't meant to understand these massive numbers, and a lot of us require a closer-to-home example. The concept of an object smaller than a planet holding more people than a planet just doesn't seem correct at face value. The Earth is massive, and it's overpopulated, we hear all the time. Granted, a lot of that problem is just how poor science communication was up until the last decade, but we are going to move well past that. So, showing the homeworld of humanity having such a huge scar cut across it, like we see with the glassing of Africa, was the best way to take that to the next step. High Charity, from the perspective of the average planet's crust inhabitor, is about the size of the chunk of Africa that was glassed. This isn't even a problem only found in Halo. Tons of media, Warhammer especially, don't really get the numbers correct since big numbers turn away a large portion of the audience. Even to people who understand or can actually grasp how big some creations are in sci-fi, it's still terrifying or somehow uncanny. The Forerunner trilogy was a really, really nice step into hard sci-fi without diving too deep. Hard sci-fi is not easy to sell, since frankly a lot of it is just numbers porn. That isn't saying that hard sci-fi is this super smart 300 IQ, Mensa, whatever, but all this is to say that it's very daunting to go from regular horror up to cosmic horror, and an even greater leap to go from cosmic horror to Lovecraftian horror. To go from a space plague that has some chance of being defeated by some gimmick or whatever like the Halo Array, to the enemy that we have after the release of the Forerunner trilogy was genuinely something new. Going from a space disease to a space disease that can and has infected their forebears 
then to an intelligence capable of infecting the most intelligent known entity in the galaxy at this time, is a huge leap. Cortana at the time of Halo 3 was without a doubt the most powerful artificial intelligence in the galaxy, and it was fully at the mercy of the grave mind. I know mendicant bias existed, but this is the known intelligence. The Forerunner trilogy from Greg Bear laid some of the best seeds for cosmic horror that I personally have ever read. We're told the story of a species that essentially maxed out the tech tree and created species for fun, which eventually backfired. The precursors are originally described as bug people who are essentially one with technology. They understand that the universe is alive, and instead of using physical matter and shaping it into building or constructs, they are able to work with the fabric or layers of this living universe to create living objects using only consciousness. We also get the beautiful story of humanity discovering the ugly truth of the Forerunner Flood War and that there was no winning. But the Forerunner trilogy did leave us with some hope, since it wasn't explicitly said that the Flood were the Precursors, or the actual limit of the Precursors. We couldn't prove definitively that the Flood were anything but corrupted Precursors. A lot of us in the community, however, were able to put together that a species as advanced as the Precursors wouldn't be able to be corrupted just by time, but a lot of us didn't really grasp the full extent of it. The final book in the series, Silentium, does such a great job of really raising the bar of the cosmic horror. Silentium showed us that it wasn't just once that humanity or even the Forerunners was nearly wiped out. The implication that the superintelligence knows when to stop as to allow their prey to fatten up again implies a deeper understanding of physiology and psychology. In Silentium, we see the librarian go to the large Magellanic Cloud, or Pathcathona, whatever you want to call it, and she sees when their ancient ancestors had learned the truth of the universe, they committed log off or were exiled. She sees that the Forerunners were not just wrong about the mantle, but the mantle wasn't what we thought it was. The realization to the Forerunners and to the wider Halo audience that the Forerunners of 100,000 years ago were not even the first of their species to be harvested was crippling, even to the greatest Forerunner who ever lived. 10 million years seems like a near inconceivable number to the wider audience, and to hear that there was even another species given a chance to rise and fall before that was the first real step into Lovecraftian horror. We don't know for sure how long it took the Forerunners to get to the point where they were quote-unquote judged by the Precursors for the first time, and to hear that another species had been tested really started to show how time was either about to or was already being messed with. But Alas, Silentium leaves us with a couple options. Either the Precursors are the Flood, or the Flood are something worse, something less intelligent but more hateful. And for base-level cosmic horror, that's great. A super-intelligent, super-hungry hive mind that dictates how the galaxy operates is terrifying enough to put some people into the Grippy Sock Hotel. Which is why I don't blame a lot of the audience for liking the Flood just to be that. A super parasite that always has and most likely will always exist. But we have to remember that there are always levels to things, and like anything that spikes neurotransmitters, we need more and more each time to give us a hit. And so we get the absolute beauty that is Lovecraftian horror. The rough definition of Lovecraftian horrors is a being or creature so far advanced from us that anything they think, do, or say is near incomprehensible to us humans. The concept of something feeding off from ideas or emotions or really eating anything other than something we can vaguely qualify as food or technology to turn something into food. I'm going to briefly bring up STCs from Warhammer because they are a great example of a bridge between sci-fi and reality. Turning rocks into food isn't weird since we know everything is made of chemicals that bond in different ways, but to obtain sustenance from thought or feelings is something so beyond our understanding it really hits different. Just the idea of something either outside of or beyond time is really hard for a lot of people to grasp, since time is such a fundamental defining part of our lives. It's a real effort in stretching to even try and understand something not dying or being able to move through time. To not be at the mercy of time or to feed off from emotions often evoke imagery of gods or demons. 
religious terms, which Halo is already so full of. So actually seeing the confirmation that they are essentially gods for all intents and purposes isn't wrong. Transcendent may be the more accurate word here, but the whole thing about a god is just not even being able to understand how they operate or think, and the Flood really fit that perfectly. I'm sure almost every human alive would say that a being capable of creating and shaping life across space and time is a god. Add to that them creating countless universes and realities in all directions of time just to eat emotions or consciousness, and an even greater number of people would call them gods. But again, I don't blame people for not liking this stuff. It's actually terrifying, and I'd be lying if I said I haven't had nightmares about this stuff, or that some of my anxiety comes from the rough understanding of the real scale and insignificance of us as a species. And that's okay. That's why we have different series, that's why we have different cinematic universes, because everyone likes different things. I'm genuinely excited to see where the Halo series goes, and I'm even more happy to read fanfiction or theorize of what it could have been. But as with all this media, the audience and the show have to keep moving, and rarely do we keep moving in the same direction for a long time. As a kid, I absolutely loved the simplicity of Halo CE and a lot of the early Halo 2, but as my brain sauce demands more and more sustenance, these deep, introspective topics become more and more interesting to me. But that's okay because the Master Chief Collection still exists. The original Halo that everyone loves at whatever level of simplicity or complexity still exists. And whatever level of horror you want, Halo has it for you. If you want basic body horror, you have Halo CE. It's still there and you can enjoy it as if it's own media. You don't have to hate on a media that is forced to move on and advance as our understanding of tech and science advance. Halo now isn't even that hard of science sci-fi. A lot of people can't even grasp the concept of being transcendent or existing outside of time, or that the universe is alive. Or hell, even more people can't grasp that we're a non-important species of apes that just got lucky. And to have all of that shoved in your face takes a certain personality, for sure. For the audience that enjoys the cosmic horror direction of the Flood, I'll leave you some recommendations. Isaac Asimov, Stephen Baxter, and Larry Niven are some absolutely amazing sci-fi authors which have different levels and densities to their sci-fi. Hell, compared to Stephen Baxter's most popular series, The Zeely Sequence, The Flood most likely wouldn't even be in the top five factions. But compare that to something like the Greek Pantheon or the basic JRPG god and they are wildly outclassed. Halo after the release of Epitaph is still probably beneath that top five, but it adds a complete another layer to this. We know for certain that the Flood and the Precursors are the exact same. They're no different. The reason why this perfect species can't seem to create another perfect species beneath them is because they don't want to. They create these species solely so that way they can feed off of their experiences or consciousness. They don't care about biomass. They want your brain juice. That's it. Also, it doesn't matter if you kill them because every single Flood is one Flood, and if they die here, they'll just go to another timeline, another universe, another reality, or just another galaxy, because Lord knows it's going to take you 100,000 years to get there. You cannot win against them, and that is the Lovecraftian horror aspect of it. The fact that you can't even understand how they work, let alone why they're doing what they're doing. I don't know, I guess all this just proves the Didact is built different, because the group of ancient humans who figured out this stuff committed Log off, and the Didact just went insane, so clearly he's either got better therapy, or he's just built different.